LG has decided to walk away from its smartphone business. It is the end of an era. LG is one of the most iconic brands in the world as they produce everything from washers and dryers to smartphones and TVs. For decades, they were the pride and joy of South Korea along with Samsung and they still very much hold that status within the country. But outside of South Korea, LG has had a rough couple of years, especially with smartphones. For years, LG was trying to break into the smartphone space and establish themselves like Samsung and Apple. But year after year, LG walked away with a bigger and bigger loss. During the worst of it, LG was down $4.5 billion within a matter of just 6 years. And the reality was that they could only justify such losses for so long and eventually they wanted out. So they started looking for buyers. But no one wanted to buy a money pit that needed to compete against Apple and Samsung. So with no choice left, LG decided to make the hard decision to completely scrap their smartphone business in April of 2021. But LG's outlook wasn't always so pessimistic. At one point, it seemed like LG was here to stay given their massive presence. For example, LG became the world's third largest smartphone maker back in 2013 and they held this title within North America until the day they shut down. And it's not like LG was stagnating or getting too comfortable either. If anything, they were doing the exact opposite as they were consistently innovating and taking chances. In fact, LG was actually the first company to make a capacitive touchscreen phone way back in 2006. They followed this up with the flexible OLED displays in 2014, modular smartphones in 2016, dual screen phones in 2019, and dual phones in 2020. We should also note that LG wasn't set on trying to maximize profits and screw over customers either. They not only kept the headphone jack for 1-2 to two years longer than everyone else, but they even tried improving it by integrating a quad DAC into their phones. From the outside, it seemed like LG had literally everything going for them. They were a household name with a bunch of resources and they were constantly trying to outdo not just the competition, but themselves. So what happened to LG? Taking a look back, LG's eventual demise can be traced back to their very first smartphone, the LG Prada back in December of 2006. As we previously touched on, the Prada was the first phone to ever have a capacitive touchscreen, and LG was even suspicious that Apple had ripped off their design. But you've probably never even heard of this phone, which brings us into LG's number one mistake, non-existent marketing. This was likely a trait that LG brought with them from the appliance space. With refrigerators and washers, marketing is not exactly one of your top concerns. For most people, these are necessities that they only buy when their old one breaks. The key is strong availability, offering great value, and having a reputation for reliability. Practicality sells appliances, not showmanship. LG approached the smartphone market with the same mentality. They figured that if they could just make a strong product, people would be lining up to buy their phones. But the key difference between appliances and smartphones was that one was a necessity and the other was a luxury, at least back in the day. With smartphones, people wanted something that was desired, something that was exclusive, something that gave them social status. Apple offered exactly this. They had their massive keynotes that garnered tens of millions of views. Even if you had no intention of buying an iPhone, you knew about the new one that Apple just released. And the people who wanted them? Well, some of them would literally wait for days outside of Apple stores to be the first ones to get the new iPhone. What did LG do on the other hand? Well, they dropped smartphones as if they were iOS updates. Actually, no, wait, I take that back. iOS updates actually get more press. The LG launch events took place during Korea time, which made it hard for Western audiences to tune in. But it wouldn't matter even if they did tune in given that LG didn't build any tension or hype. Their phones would become available in Korea the exact same day. Also, there wasn't any sort of synchronized international launch. The launch dates for America and Europe were simply when logistics channels could get them there, and oftentimes this took months. Again, 
This seems to be a lingering attribute of their appliance business. People don't hold out on buying a stove because a new one is just around the corner. So the specifics of when a new product makes its way to Western markets didn't really matter. With smartphones, however, people want the latest and the greatest. In fact, many people hold out for several months just so that they can get the latest right when it drops. I know you're watching. So much of LG's success in the smartphone space in the early days simply came from the fact that they were already an established cell phone maker and brand. But other than that, they didn't have much going for them. And when more competition entered the scene, they would feel a squeeze. As the smartphone market continued to mature, we started to see smartphones transition from being a luxury to being a necessity. This gave rise to a whole new demographic of people who were just looking for a practical value device. Companies like Google, OnePlus, Xiaomi, and Huawei have basically built their entire smartphone business around this market. You would think that this was the perfect opportunity for LG. They were already in the space making practical devices, so all they had to do was double down and pump out some marketing about how much value they offer. But LG obviously didn't do that. You see, in 2012 and 2013, LG finally realized their marketing blunder. They needed to make LG smartphones the latest and the greatest, and they needed to make them unique, special, and exclusive. With that in mind, they decided to go after the premium market, which isn't a bad thing. LG did have a shot at taking on Samsung and maybe even overtaking them. But while LG had the right idea, they also kind of didn't. LG was right in that they had to offer the latest and the greatest. But they were wrong in thinking that they actually had to make the latest and greatest. Whether we're talking about Mercedes or Apple, the key to making the latest and greatest isn't actually to make the latest and the greatest. The key is to make a strong product and pair it with exceptional positioning. LG, however, approached this from a literal sense and incorporated some wacky stuff into their phones. A few of their experiments actually turned out to be trendsetting. For example, the LG G5 was the first smartphone to sport an ultra-wide camera way back in 2016. Since then, ultra-wide cameras have become a standard amongst premium smartphones. But most of LG's experiments didn't play out quite as well, starting with the LG G Flex in 2013. Around this time, curved TVs were a hot thing, so LG figured that they should bring this future to smartphones. But this choice ended up aging as well as curved TVs themselves. Soon after, we saw the LG V10 in 2015. This phone came with two unique features. One, the phone had two front-facing cameras, and two, the phone had a secondary screen at the top that displayed a taskbar type of thing that never really caught on. Moving forward, we saw the LG G5 in 2016. The selling feature of this phone was the fact that it was modular. During a time when everyone was following the Apple way and preventing smartphone upgrades, LG decided to give choice back to the consumers. But LG's partners never pulled through and launched accessories that made the modularity actually worthwhile. Nonetheless, LG continued pushing forward. They introduced a dual screen phone with the G8X and a swivel phone with the LG Wing. But while these features made LG phones as expensive as iPhones, they didn't make them as appealing as iPhones. LG simply became known as the smartphone producer with the gimmicks. As losses continued to pile up at LG, they naturally became more desperate. Their gimmicks became more outrageous and their focus became more tunnel visioned. Everything centered around how do we get more attention and how do we sell more units? This makes sense given that volume was by far their biggest pain point. They simply weren't able to sell enough units to make up for their monster R&D expenses. So they naturally shifted all of their focus into garnering more sales. From a macro perspective, this was a great choice given that this is exactly what LG had been lacking for so long. But unfortunately, this came with the cost of sacrificing current users. LG started to drop the ball when it came to software, hardware, and UI optimization. For example, while LG phones had massive batteries on the spec sheet, the real-world performance was average at best due to the phones being so inefficient. Software updates became few and far between, and several LG phones were plagued with boot loop issues. It didn't take long for LG to become infamous for their software issues, but these issues didn't just stop at software. 
LG started having hardware issues as well. On the LG V20 for example, the camera glass was for some reason extremely fragile. LG phones were also plagued with battery overheating issues, microphone issues, network issues, and fingerprint sensor issues. LG's whole business was centered around making practical electronics, but somehow their new smartphones were anything but practical. And to make things worse, it didn't seem like LG was truly trying to fix any of this. They had gone so far down the latest and greatest rabbit hole that all they seemingly wanted to do was create something that was super out there and garner the attention of the media. The purpose of their new phones were to simply get you to buy. They didn't care about your experience using the phone or your feedback. This strategy may work alright if you're selling products that people only buy once. But with phones, people are constantly replacing them every few years. Not to mention, people use their phones for hours every single day. So it didn't take them long to notice. LG did eventually try to make it up to customers by offering super long warranties. For the phones affected by boot loops for example, LG offered warranties for up to 30 months. But this is not the type of impression that you can reverse. Once people believe that LG phones offer a crappy experience, they're gonna hold that belief forever. And now that even existing users were turning on the company, LG's fate was sealed. In the end, LG is a perfect example of just because you're successful in one industry does not mean that you'll be successful in another. Throughout their entire smartphone run, they were constantly at the wrong place at the wrong time. In the early days when the market was filled with luxury buyers, LG's marketing and positioning simply wasn't up to par. Then when the general market joined the scene, LG finally decided to go after their premium market, but not with strong marketing, but without their gimmicks that rarely hit. And finally, LG became so desperate on getting new sales that they started completely ignoring their core market of existing users. With such fatal flaws, it's no wonder that after 15 years in the smartphone industry, all LG had to show for it was billions of dollars worth of losses and hundreds of millions of angry customers. Looking forward, it doesn't seem like LG will be restarting their smartphone business anytime soon. In fact, the company is doing better without smartphones. So it's probably best that they stick to what they're good at. But hey, while LG wasn't able to make it within the smartphone space themselves, we may very well see many of their gimmicks make a comeback in a much better way. But only time will tell. Did you ever own an LG smartphone? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you hope that LG smartphones rest in peace. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.